It's always good to be joined by this man, the unified heavyweight champion of the world, Anthony Joshua. Anthony, so many questions to ask you about possible opponents in 2020, possible venues as well. But let's, if we can, briefly look back to 2019, um, a roller coaster year for you. When you look back at 2019, how do you assess that? 2019, how do I assess that? Well, a serious year fighting abroad. Tough roads. I'm trying to think and put it all into like a short sentence, you know what I mean? I took in my loss, learned how to deal with that. I feel like I was one of the first heavyweights of stature in the division to take a loss. So it was important to deal with it like a champion. Bouncing back, finishing the year on a high. Had to had one of the best JD parties, JD sports parties I've ever seen. I was on stage rapping with Heady One, boxing aside, lyricist, DJ, everything that an athlete wants to be come out of me and I just enjoyed it with the people that supported me and I just ended the year on a high. Now we're now in 2020 and it's back to business. Let's look forward to 2020. It should be a good year for you. The two names that you've been linked with, the two names that have been mentioned a lot, the IBF mandatory Kubat Pulev yeah. and the WBO mandatory Alexander Usyk. Yeah. Can we say it's fair that one of those will probably be the guy that you do fight next? Yeah, I, I, I'll definitely say so because it's mandatory. And then the other situation is the one who I don't fight, I'm sure I'll fight sometime anyway. So even though it's like one or the other, it's one or the other for now. The heavyweight division, everyone's welcome to challenge. So even if it don't happen the first time, one of them will fight me again in the future. So um, everyone's going to get their chance. That's why I'm not even really worried about who it is because I know sometime down the line I'm going to end up fighting them anyway. You stoked the fire a little bit recently. Obviously, we saw pictures of you meeting Eddie Hearn and Alexander Usyk's manager. You hashtagged, you hashtagged that meeting, yeah. Joshua Usyk. Yeah. Can we look into that? I mean, can you yeah, tell us what into, happened? Look into it. Look into it. We mean business. We want to fight the best. I go to these meetings. I don't really post about them, but you have to let people know that you're about that life. When it comes to this heavyweight boxing, you fight the best in the division. That's the, that's the best cruiserweight that we've ever seen. And I want to compete with him coming up to heavyweight. People say, oh, he's a cruiserweight. Look what Holyfield done. Phenomenal fighter. So what's to say Usyk can't go on and do great things? But before we see that potential, he has to come through the big boys of the, of the division. And I'll be the first one to challenge him. Is there a danger that you might have to vacate one of the belts? You've always spoken about how hard you had to work for the belts, the possible undisputed fight. But is there a danger if you don't fight a Pulev or Usyk that you might have to vacate one of those? If I didn't, yeah, I'd have to. That's just the way the game goes. And anyone who would be in my position would have to do the same thing. So it's not as if I'm getting singled out and I'm like, oh, why are they against me? It's just the name of the game. And uh, I've got to take it like a man and think, all right, it's gone for now. But as I said, the heavyweight division is like a roller coaster and it will soon come back around. UK fight fans are desperate to see you fight back in the UK. You've not fought here since Alexander Povetkin in what, September yeah. 2018. Yeah. Tottenham's been earmarked as a possible yeah. destination. I mean, is that likely Tottenham possible? Why not? It's a great opportunity. I think the reason is because it's crazy to say like this, but Wembley sold out. And it's crazy to even think that we can just throw Wembley or Cardiff out there like that. It's a blessing. So to even have the opportunity to go to Tottenham um, is a blessing for me. I'd be happy to fight in the O2 if that was an opportunity as well. But there's a big buzz around the heavyweight division right now. And um, the more people to come, the more the merrier. So if Tottenham is open, Tottenham it is. So I'll be there with the OFB boys, Heady One, them and they're wrapping me out. You know what I mean? It'll be sick. So I'm all for it. I was in Saudi Arabia for the Andrew Ruiz fight. Um, yeah. Over there, you didn't even want to mention the possibility of fighting Deontay Wilder or Tyson yeah, Fury. Yeah, yeah. You said you've got business to do. You handled mm. that business. Those questions are going to come now about Deontay Wilder or Tyson Fury. What is the real likelihood of you fighting any of those guys back end of 2020 or, or early 2021? We've had meetings. So that same meeting with the uh, Usyk's manager, um, after that we had another meeting potentially to kind of put an offer in place to... Um, solidify that fight before they've even had their fight and I've even had my next fight providing we both win. I think for, for a reason everyone wants Wilder to win because that's the fight everyone wants to see. So um, Wilder's got a big right hand, I've got a great left hand. So it's going to be a matchup of a great boxing match and that's the one that everyone wants to see. So um, we had a meeting about that, it's a great potential. I heard they have a fire fight lined up towards the end of the year but what we have to do is throw a curveball in there something that gets Wilder's attention providing he wins that he'll think to himself you know what even though I do have this rematch clause I'm going to see how I can manipulate my contract and get out of it and fight for the undisputed championship of the world Tyson Fury said some things about you as Tyson Fury always does he said if you were to fight Deontay Wilder that fight ends in two rounds you'll get knocked out what do you make of that opinion sorry from Tyson Fury 
oh, that's the same man that betted on Charles Martin to beat me, Joseph Parker to beat me. So uh, the first time I would have listened, the second, third and fourth time you get it wrong, you start realising that he's a bit of a waffler. So uh, yes, Tyson Fury just doing what Tyson Fury does. He even said that he spoke to McGregor on the, uh, on the phone and that was a lie as well. So what can we believe when it comes to Tyson Fury these days? All right, final question. Tyson Fury also said that no. before he retires, <laughs> before he retires, yeah, before he retires, <laughs> that he will fight you, he'll fight Wilder, he'll fight Dylan White. Do you believe that's, any of this? That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's the talk I respect. That's boxing talk, straight to the point, and that's what I'm about. So um, the doors are open. Firstly, good luck for your fight in February. We're wishing you well. Bring the belts back here. And then imagine having that fight in Tottenham as well. That would be phenomenal. So that's why I'm supporting Fury because I think, imagine like the local kids, right? Locally that are down Tottenham and whatnot, being able to watch the undisputed championship of the world on their doorstep. They've got to catch a little Uber or a little taxi down the road or ride their pedal bike to the stadium. How unbelievable would that be? So that's why I'd love it to be here in the UK. So um, good luck to him. I'm wishing him well. Good luck to you as well, Anthony Joshua. Thanks for talking to Guy Sports. Thank you very much. Cheers.